Hi, this is Barry Doyle with the Communications Department at the Desert Southwest Conference. Today, I'm excited to work with you to show you how to use the free online image editor called Pixlr Express. Pixlr Express is a great way to make quick and easy fixes to your digital photos, and best of all, it can be used from any computer that has an internet connection. In this video, I'll show you how to use the tools in Pixlr Express for making quick and easy fixes so your photos can look their very best. Starting Pixlr is easy. Simply type pixlr.com in the address bar of your web browser or search PIXLR in your favorite search engine such as Google, Bing, or Yahoo. Once you've loaded the Pixlr website, there are three options, Pixlr Editor, Pixlr Express, or Pixlr-O-Matic. We're going to use Pixlr Express, so I'm going to click on that center button to get started, you need to locate the image that you wish to edit. Simply click on the Browse button, find the folder where you stored your image, and open up your image. You may find it helpful to click the Full Screen button on the top right of the screen so you can get rid of the advertisements and focus on the task at hand. Once your image is loaded, you'll see tool options on the bottom of the screen, the top right, and the top left. Over on the left, you have a Save and Close button. Don't forget that you'll always need to save your photograph after you've made the changes. On the right, you have an undo button, a redo button. There's also a full screen option if you choose to view your photo at full screen. Here is a slider that allows you to zoom in and out of your photo. On the bottom, you will see an adjustment button. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And the main editing tools expand in a new menu. The first thing I notice about this photograph is that it's too dark. The best tool in Pixlr Express to lighten up your photograph is called Contrast. So I'm going to move my mouse to the Contrast button, and here you'll see two different options I can choose from. I'm going to start with the Brightness slider, and I'm going to increase the exposure in this photo by moving the slider to the right. After brightening the photo, it looks a bit faded, so I'm going to fix that problem, increasing the contrast in the photo by simply moving the Contrast slider to the right. Next, I need to click Apply to save my changes. In order to find out what your photograph looked like before you made the change, go up to the Undo button and click Undo. And then, to go back to where you were, click Redo. I'm happy with this change, so I'm going to keep it and move on. The next adjustment that I'd like to make is to use the Crop tool to isolate my subject. Cropping your photos can remove unnecessary distractions so your subject can really stand out. Once you've opened up the crop tool, you have a grid over your photograph. There are points on each corner you can use to crop or select the area you wish to remove. By default, you can freely move the crop tool around your photograph. You can lock your photo's height and width by using the values at the bottom of the screen. Once you've made a decision about the crop in your photo, simply click Apply to save the changes. The next thing I might want to fix in this photograph is the color. So I'm going to click on the Color tool. There are three sliders here that allow you to change the hue, saturation, or lightness. The hue slider is extremely helpful for removing unwanted color casts, such as blues, reds, or greens. Notice that you can also adjust the hue by clicking a numerical value in the box above the slider. With the hue slider at a value of 11, the skin tones of my subjects look more natural, so I'm happy with that. Next, I'm going to move on to saturation. The saturation slider allows you to increase the color in your photo or to decrease it. Dragging to the right increases color. In this case, I'm going to pay attention to the skin tones of our choir. So I'm going to go to the left and remove a little of the color. I'm going to click Apply. And now, in order to see the before and after, I can go to the Undo button for before or the Redo button for after. After comparing the before and after, I feel the saturation adjustment didn't work well, so I'm not going to keep the saturation adjustment. Another tool that I find helpful is the Vibrance tool which helps you to reduce certain colors and increase certain colors. It's a little different than saturation and has a different effect. Decreasing the value of the vibrance slider seems to give this photo a more natural appearance. For now, I'm going to apply it 
Let's compare the before and after using the undo and redo buttons. If you notice the walls behind the choir, there's a reddish reflection. When I go back to the after, the reddish reflection is removed. I think that that looks a lot better. Finally, I'm going to try using the sharpen tool to enhance the fine details in this photo. I highly recommend that you use the sharpening tool sparingly. To make sure I'm not overdoing it with this tool, I'm going to zoom in to get a closer look. Take note of what happens to the details when I use too much sharpening in this picture. I certainly don't want to leave it there, so I'm going to back down the sharpening to about 20, zoom back out, and click undo to see before, and redo to see after. This small amount of sharpening made a subtle change, but it improves the overall clarity of the photograph. As a final step, I'm going to use the crop tool to isolate the choir, since they are the subject of this picture, and also to remove any unnecessary distractions around the edges of the frame. I'm happy with the cropped adjustment, so now I'm going to finish up by clicking on the Save button. By default, Pixlr wants to save your image at 85%. I like to go to 100% and save my final image at the highest quality possible. When the Save dialog box comes up, Make sure you change the name of the new picture so you don't accidentally overwrite the original on your hard drive. When you're done editing your photograph and you've saved your work, you can just close it and you're ready to work on another photo. Now let's move on to working with a portrait in Pixlr Express. I'm going to click on the Browse button to find my photo. My portrait is located here. Click open. And here we have a photo of some very good friends of mine that I photographed for the holidays. The first thing I notice about this picture is that the color can be improved to make the skin tones look natural. Also, the photo is a little bit dark and I may even wish to remove distractions. So moving on to the adjustment button, it opens up all the tools I can use. The first thing I'm going to do is to lighten this photo. The program remembered the brightness setting I had on the last photo with a value of 13 and the contrast at a value of 21. I already see a difference in this photo just by pure chance. As a matter of fact, I'm going to click apply and let's take a look at the before and after. I click on the undo button for before and the redo button for after. Looking around the photo at some of the areas that were covered by shadows, they've been removed and it looks brighter. I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to work with the color, so I need to click on the color button. And let's see what we can do about some of these skin tones. I'm going to go ahead and zero out the values I used before. Since this is a portrait of people, the first priority is the skin tones. So I'm going to use the hue slider very carefully to find an adjustment that gives me the most natural look. Moving to the left, I'm bringing reds in. In this case, my subjects do not need more red in their skin. I'm going to zero that out. Moving to the right, brings in some greens. I'm seeing no improvement with the hue, so I'm going to leave it alone. Sometimes when skin tones are overly saturated, they can appear to be red. I'm going to use the saturation tool to remove some of the color in the skin tones and see how it looks. Moving to the left at about minus 14, it looks a lot better to me. I'm going to apply it. Let's go to before and after. Undo for before, redo for after. This is a subtle change, but it makes a difference in the skin tones. Let's go ahead and try the vibrance tool. Already, the Vibrance tool is set at minus 36 from our choir picture, but it's a little bit too much for this photo. So I'm going to zero that out. Move the slider to the left slowly and carefully. Sometimes you might want to zoom in to see the details better. Remember to go up to the zoom slider here. little bit more to the left, minus 25. That looks pretty good. I'm going to click apply. 
and go ahead and click on undo redo I think the skin tones look a lot better another way I can improve this photograph is to remove distractions around my subjects so I'm going to use the crop tool grab the slider get some of that tree out of the way move the grid to where you think it looks good click apply now that I'm finished I can click on the save button change the quality to a hundred percent give your photo a different name so it won't overwrite the original photo and click save I want to say thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you find it helpful. If you have any further questions, you can contact me here at the conference. Please email me at bdoyle at dscumc.org.